Hey everybody, welcome to CoinCast on CryptoTradersPro.com, available on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and all around the internet. Uh, to watch these kind of interviews in perpetuity, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm joined today by Luis Del Mazo and Tanya Rodriguez from TNCoin.io. Thanks for joining. How are you two? Doing great. Hi, Kurt. Thanks for having us. For sure. My pleasure. Uh, all right, let's start out. Uh, we'll we'll jump right in. What is TN Coin in like one minute? Like the simplest version of, of what is TN Coin? Sure. Well, t- uh, TN Coin is a tokenized real estate investment fund. Um, it's built on the Stellar Consensus Protocol, and uh, it's just basically uh, your syndication um, for the acquisition of real estate fund. Uh, using blockchain technology to tokenize it. That's the only tokenized uh, okay. aspect of crypto. Very cool. And, and what are your roles, both of you? Is it uh, CEO and, and chief developer? or what, <laughs> what, do, what do you do? Well, I mean, our, our backgrounds are in real estate, and we're co-founders. So, yeah, we're pretty much, you know. We're founders and uh, fund managers for the 10-coin uh investment fund. Cool. Is it 10 coin or like Tennessee coin or what is TN? What's that stand for? Uh, well, primarily our investments are going to be in Tennessee in the Southeast region okay. of the United States. So we're looking at Florida, Georgia, but primarily Tennessee. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's Tennessee. Yeah. Cool. And is this something, uh, did you two have to hire a, a developer to create this thing or, or is it, or one of you, the, the tech savvy guru behind the scenes? Well, we've had to, get a couple people to help us you know of course we're not tech savvy when it comes to the development so we yeah. have to you know bring some people on to help us with developing the the coin the wallet and all that stuff. sure we've hired a couple developers uh, one of the when we first started out we started out with the erc20 mm-hmm. so we went through that but then when we found out about the uh, stellar protocol uh, we, we scrapped our erc20 we, we rehired the developer and uh, we're in the process right now of um completing those smart contracts. Sure. See, I think that's awesome. Like one of the things, you know, a lot of times we, we tell people that are doing ICOs a lot of times, like, no, we're not interested in working with you. When I saw that you were a stellar blockchain, that that's why I wanted to talk to you because you know, anybody can make an ERC 20 token or make something and like, Hey, we're just trying to fundraise that kind of thing. I get it. However, the fact that you moved to stellar, uh, which has more throughput and it, it, it can do a lot more things. It tells me that you, you, desire to use this coin so what was that process like you know why ultimately did you switch from erc20 and and move over to stellar well we went to a conference in amsterdam and you know we started getting some more information about the stellar consensus protocol and we thought okay with erc20 we're not able to um liquidate nobody can sell right now right that's the problem so when we saw that Stellar had the built-in exchange, we were like, this is what we need for our investors. They, we, want, we want them to feel comfortable when they purchase that they can liquidate whenever they need to, you sure. know, in 90 days. So we just want to make it convenient for our investors. But it's not only the uh, built-in um, exchange, which is huge. Uh, I mean, the scalability, uh, has, it can handle 1,000 transactions per second at five seconds uh, per transaction. Um, it's a very user friendly interface, uh, it's sure. plug and play. Um, and it, it's a, uh, it's a payment protocol. It's, it's designed for tokenization. Right. No, absolutely. Now we've got uh, stellar just announced or actually Coinbase just announced yesterday that they want to be adding stellar to their platform as well. So that'll add uh, a whole bunch more liquidity and stuff on that platform. I, I think that's uh, good information. I, I think it's yeah. it's particularly wise of both of you to jump onto the Stellar model uh, before it ends up being uh, a big thing. I, I've been super critical of Ethereum in the past because it's it's limited. Like you said, there's not as many transactions per second, and it's a struggle there. And the higher fees and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, it's very rare that a first generation of anything you know is going to pull through. So um, you know they have a lot of competition far as the ERC-20 yeah. goes. You know? Absolutely. Can you explain um, tokenization of physical or secured assets? Like what is, for the totally disengaged person, what is tokenization of real estate? Tokenization is the fractional, uh, fractionalizing 
the asset. So fractionalizing the ownership of the physical asset or the security. So okay. like, for example, there is a, a property for a million dollars and you invest a hundred thousand dollars in that mm -hmm. well, you are getting 10% ownership of mm -hmm. token. It's token. It's fractionalized 10%. Sure. Right. So, okay, cool. And then what's the benefit of that for me as an investor? Like it, essentially I don't have enough money to buy a building myself or, or is it something where like if I own my home and I want to sell a hundredth of my home, uh, can I, is that like, Rather than taking out a second mortgage or something like that, can I tokenize my own property and sell shares of my own home? Is that a, a function? Well, I mean, it might be a possibility. Um, you know, there's different forms when it comes to real estate as far as investing. Um, equity lines, that's an option. Um, this will probably be more for larger transactions. Sure. Uh, so what we're going to do is securitize. And when you tokenize, you're creating a, a digital asset. So mm -hmm. it's a digital share. Um, shareholders... Uh, would get it comes in the form of tokens. So each token sure. will be distributed a dividend. Mm -hmm. um, in our case, it'll be at the end of 12 to 18 months. We're you know working on sure. that. Um, so that's the main thing. Um, and also is that the uh, shareholders can now take their stocks or their investments off the exchange. Mm -hmm. So up until now, you've had to do everything through your broker. Uh, you right. can still transfer stocks through your broker. It could take anywhere from three days to three weeks. Um, you know, right. recently we saw a, uh, you know, maybe it was an atomic swap, but it was something close to $300 million uh, right. in crypto transferred in four minutes for like $4 or right. some ridiculous amount. So um, this is the future of transferring money. You know? Yeah. Thank you. For sure. So what does the coin itself do? Is the coin going to be a, a tradable asset? Like, would it make sense for a, a, a trader to be wanting to snatch up some TN coin while it's cheap? Or is it not going to work like that at all? Um, it's more of a security as far as trading goes. Right. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be something that uh, traders might want to get into. Or it's going to fluctuate on a day-to-day -day basis. The idea is to create more of a stable uh, rate of return growth. A part of our dividend um, options is to do buybacks and burn those tokens um, to, you know, level out the floor um, of those tokens. So we're, we're looking more at a long term, you know, 10 mm -hmm. to 15 year type plan to where right. we want to develop and, and increase uh, the actual profits or the of the actual token, the value. Sure. That makes sense. So, um how does the investment fund is is it going to be are you taking like groups of real estate investments and tokenizing them in groups and then you're going to manage the fund or or how would somebody get started how would somebody get involved are they coming to your office and saying hey like i i'm i'm looking to get into real estate investment or, or how does someone find you and start to work with you and tn coin well, I guess that would be, you know, online. Most investors, you know, right now, the investors that we're, we're working with are accredited investors. Mm -hmm. well, and so most of them who are crypto savvy are out there looking for, for coins like this. Um, you know, how the investment fund work is after we, you know, raise our soft cap, mm -hmm. we'll start uh, finding the assets that we want to purchase so that, you know, properties that have value add opportunities to, to increase the value of the actual portfolio. Sure. Um, but, but, you know, once we get that started, it's, it's going out and targeting investors and, and calling investors and doing old school type of stuff too, not just internet. Yeah. It's calling, it's pounding the pavement, just like most other businesses. Well, that's the beauty of uh, the cryptocurrencies these days. Because we can market on an international level, level uh, we can market to all kinds of people. So if you're outside the United States, a minimum investment of a thousand dollars, and you can start investing in real estate uh, without the headache in the United States, uh, it's the accredited investor. Right. Um, so uh, it, there is a, a twenty-five thousand dollar minimum, and okay. you have to have the meet all the requirements for accredited investor. Okay, that, that makes sense. Uh, would it be something? Uh Will you work with foreign investors as well? Like, let's say somebody loved your product and wanted to, 
do something similar in, in let's say, France? Would that be a, a simple thing for you to transition and do? Or Oh, yeah. Uh, be- it's just like buying any type of other crypto. You can go up to the Stellar Exchange at the end of July, on July 30th. Um, they will be able to purchase these. Um, of course, it's KYC and AML standard. Right. Uh, stuff. So depending on where their jurisdiction is, uh, they'll be able to, to buy. I think uh, we've had a huge positive um, response res- from the Swiss and you know many other countries. Cool. That's awesome. So what's your what's your background in cryptocurrency? Did you get into Bitcoin uh, recently or, or are you like one of those old school guys that's sitting on 50,000 of them that you mined on your laptop or something or, or what's what's your background? We've been in uh, real estate since 1998. So the last 20 years, we've been primarily in real estate. Uh, the last couple of years, um, you know, I realized it was a bubble. I was back in the bubble back in 2008 and uh, yeah. that was a rude awakening. <laughs> and so, you know, I start to prepare and we started investing in crypto and blockchain and uh, just got into it and then realized, you know, hey, we could do this. We could create our own uh, token and investment fund. And so that's what we did. Cool. That's very cool. How about you, Tanya? Uh, when, when did you discover crypto or was it a, a joint thing? You discovered it together? Um, well, he discovered it before I did. And, you know, I was pretty skeptical. I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to do this because I'm, you know, I'm I'm not used to investing in things like that. You know, it's more investing in a hard asset. Yeah. So once once I started seeing his gains and the things that he was learning and teaching me, Mm. I was like, okay, we've got to go full force on this. Yeah. Yeah, So it's it's just been a roller coaster ride and it's been a lot of learning, but it's been great. That's awesome. You know, it's interesting. We, we talk a little bit in the background about how, like, I, I interview people professionally, and there are very few women uh, that are in the space, like, in a leadership role and, and rocking and rolling, like, in, in tokenization, blockchain in general. And I, I don't, I'm, I have my theories as to why it's so man-dominated, like, computer nerdery in general. But uh, I, I, I think it's super cool, like, to, to hear your perspective on it and and just to have a, a, a woman as a face of a project and, and just uh, talking about it with authority, I, I think it's great. It's it's cool to see. Um, it, what's the, let's see, what are the tax implications? This this wasn't a question I pre-prepared, so I apologize. <laughs> this is a bit much. But the way that tax law has changed in 2018, I know a lot of crypto traders are really, uh, they're not sure when they are experiencing a taxable event. So I was wondering if that causes extra exposure for people investing in your coin because it's not like it's not a coin meant to be day traded or swing traded. It's a securitized asset. Is that treated differently? Have you, have you prepared for that or is that something that kind of sidelined you because it's it's kind of a new concept like it was kind of thrown at us at the last minute for 2018's taxes? Yeah, I think it is a new concept, but I also know that with any crypto, you're not going to be taxed on it unless you realize that gain. Mm-hmm. So say you're investing in TN coin, but you haven't sold it yet. Right. It's not taxable yet. I mean, the dividends sure. that you're receiving after those 18 months will be taxable. Of course. Right. But until yeah. you sell those off, you're not truly realizing a gain. And again, right. check with your CPA yeah, and, account. Out an account. These, right. uh, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, they're just trying to figure all this out uh, as far right. as, legislation and the taxation and all of that so sure it's constantly changing and evolving and of course check with your accountant yeah absolutely and, and that's what i have to tell everybody we have a lot of people come to us and be like man if i if i make 30 trades a day am i gonna be taxed i'm like well <laughs> probably <laughs> like de- definitely get a good accountant with all those gains you know or if you're losing a lot then whatever <laughs> so all right interesting um let's see you know, I was looking through your website. I, I liked a lot of what I saw. Um, the roadmap uh, didn't go too far out. I, I'm curious, like, what are the next steps? Like, what's the what's the next big thing on the roadmap that you're really excited about? Well, well I guess uh, the next thing in the roadmap is phase two, which is raising a hundred million. Once we <laughs> once we reach our fifty million and start creating those assets, you know, it's raising the hundred million. So that we can open the open the opportunity of investing in our fund to all level of investors in the United States through a Regulation A plus offering. So right now we're only able to market to the you know accredited investor, and we want to level the playing field for everybody. Right. So that's you know what we have in mind. 
Okay, very cool. And is that something? Um, is that a, across all uh, tokenized assets? You have to have a certain amount of. Is it the liquidity, or, or what's the issue there? Well, um, we have regulations. You know, being in the jurisdiction that we're in, the United States. Right. Um, so you have a lot of the crypto. Uh, investors staying out of the United States, and yeah. uh, you know, we have no problem uh, working within the uh, the re legal regulations, and so that's that's what we're doing uh, right now. We can only offer a 506c to accredited investors. Our ultimate goal is to offer a regulation A plus, mm -hmm. so that all levels of investors can invest um, in crypto in the United States. And so uh, it's just making sure we comply with the securities laws and, um, you know, and every jurisdiction is different. So outside the United States, people may be able to invest a little bit less. Sure. And um, it just depends on their jurisdiction. Sure. Now, it's interesting. You know, we, we talk about, you know, decentralizing everything. And I think that's probably a, a tagline on about 2000 websites for, for different coins and stuff out there talking about. Ah, we're going to decentralize. We're going to have a borderless economy, and you know, it kind of seems like regulation might be creeping up on us faster than we can get crypto into people's hands and start doing business with each other. Um, to that point, like, what do you see as like, what is the the great, um, what is the great use case of cryptocurrency? Are are you one of these people that believes that we can replace uh, monetary systems? Like, can we be doing business daily in? Uh, in cryptocurrency, or do you think we'll always kind of have our own tribes and own governments, and you know, crypto will be a like a subset or something like that? Uh, well, we're just seeing a, a new medium of exchange. That's all it is. Uh, you know, I look at it as a stock, and yeah. um, you know, maybe it's an unregulated stock, but um, you know, that's basically what it is. Now you can just take it off the exchange, and you can exchange it with other people. Right. Um, the value may fluctuate. Uh, so, you know, that's the only problem with Bitcoin and, and the other cryptos, the mm -hmm. uh, volatility. So, sure. you know, as far as we go, that's why we're trying to create a maybe a more stable asset. Is it going to replace money? No, you have to have fiat currency in order to arrive at a value of the asset. If you don't right. have fiat, how do you know what it's worth? Right? Sure. So, I mean, whether it's, you know, the fiat's worth less or more you still got to have it so right. um i mean that's kind of where we are i don't think it's going to replace money it's just another medium of exchange it might in third world countries but i don't know if the u.s is well yeah and economies maybe without right. currency, like right. you know sudan i mean uh, or wherever right now that, that's that's my thought on it too like i think the west like to americans obviously like what you're doing that is the financial opportunity right but if, if you go to places where, you know, they don't trust their bank, they don't trust their government or they're in, you know, like Venezuela has got 40,000% hyperinflation or whatever right now to where, you know, Bitcoin's volatility, they look at that and they're like, hey, that's, uh, that's super stable. <laughs> so uh, it, it's interesting. Like, uh, so uh, do you think something like, you know, Litecoin or Bitcoin Cash or something could develop and come up out of the, the developing world first and then maybe teach us a lesson in the United States or, or what do you think? It's possible. Anything's possible. <laughs> right now. So, sure. You know. Cool. Who knows? It might. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Here's hoping. I, I'm a I'm a cash use case guy. I, I like the idea of of using crypto as money. So that's uh, that's my own little bias in there. <laughs> so for you to like, what is what does absolute success look like for TN Coin? Like, I, I'm sure you've got like some kind of expensive bottle of champagne hidden somewhere. For like, okay, we did it. Today's the day. We're gonna break it out. We're gonna we're gonna share a you know twenty thousand dollar bottle of champagne together. Like, what what makes that happen? What what's the celebration? Uh, when when do you do that? Well, I for me, um, I think the celebration is when we actually hit the soft cap and we can start producing sure. for the investors. That for me personally, because that's when we can go full steam ahead mm -hmm. and uh, realize the actual vision of sure. the end point. And that's when I'd like to open the champagne, but you know. And I agree. I mean, to us, it's all about the investors. So we want to have a great rate of return. Uh, you know, we want people to talk positive about us, tell their friends. 
and um, you know use it as an investment vehicle because that's the its primary purpose right so at the end of the day we want to see our investors uh, have a slow and steady rate of return you know you might not see huge gains um, but in its in the traditional sense of a security uh, instrument or uh, real estate investing um, it should you know be a solid investment sure all right. So how did you both get into the industry? Like what's your individual backgrounds in uh, real estate itself? Well, I started in 1998. Previous to that, I worked with Collier's, uh, Inter well, Collier's International. Okay. Um, and I started out as a secretary there okay. and um, got really interested in the commercial side of it. And, um, and just decided to get my license and started in commercial, residential, uh, started buying properties to fix and flip for myself. Um, and then, you know, we met and we started doing this. Cool. Yeah. So same thing. I started in the mortgage business, uh, in 96 that got my real estate license in 98 worked for Remax was a top producer, uh, up until 2008, then the economy crashed. I went through all of that, went from six figures to no figures, <laughs> uh, struggled. Um, and, you know, and here we are today. I, you know, it, yeah. I built the last 10 years up. Um, we've been working in the industry, uh, buying, renovating, uh, fixing, flipping, uh, oh, managing, yeah. Um, yeah, working commercial properties. And sure. so, um, you know, we, we haven't had a huge amount of, of funds to work with, but, you know, this is the opportunity that we're uh, trying to create. Yeah, you know, for sure. By, uh, you know, larger acquisitions and portfolios and such. Sure. No, and th that's that's very, I mean, that's a million people's stories. In fact, I mean, that's that's what Satoshi Nakamoto gave us. It was like, hey, you know, the, the, the economy essentially got taken away from us in 2008. So... You know, here's here's Bitcoin. Here's a new way for us to do business. Uh, you know, in a, in a different way that doesn't need the uh, the other guy. So that's that's interesting. So how long have you two been working together then? Ooh, five, five years. Five years. Five years. Cool. Do you have like separate families and stuff? Or I didn't even ask if you like. Are you two just business partners, or are you like? What's your what's your situation? <laughs> we just got married. So. Oh, congratulations! That's Thank great. I, I didn't even think to ask. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, congrats! That's that's awesome. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. So you know, full blown team here. Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, hey, that's that's awesome. That's you know, you, you gotta work with who you trust, right? That's right. That's right. So, all right, what, what, like, what kind of real estate are you looking to accumulate? Like, what, what is an ideal situation? Or maybe, like, what are two or three ideal uh, real estate opportunities that you'd like to pursue with TN Coin? I would say uh, multifamily properties, uh, apartment buildings, uh, triple net retail leases, um, uh, foreclosed properties that we can fix up and flip or hold notes on, things of that nature. Okay. Very cool. Uh, would you like desire to lean more toward commercial or, or more toward residential opportunities or does it not really matter in your market or what do you think? I don't think it really matters. What matters is the the income, you know, sure. it makes sense commercially or residentially. Um, yeah. Just got to make sure the numbers work. I personally like the idea of residential. I think there's more flexibility mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, holding notes uh, creating notes so you know you get commercial free property and uh, I mean debt free property and then we can turn around and hold notes on those that way we don't have to worry about the taxes insurance right um, yeah. and, you and, know. Interest rate. and then of course you can now you create also a secondary commodity that could be traded um, mm -hmm. so there's a whole secondary market of the notes and right. also provide the fund liquidity so sure. uh, but yeah, commercial property, multifamily is our primary um, goal. Okay. So speaking of uh, you know liquidity and stuff, do do you have any existing venture capital? Like, has anybody helped you develop this, or is this a self funded venture for you two? So this has been a self funded venture for us uh, right now. Uh, it's been totally involved, um, uh, going to the conferences, meeting uh, the attorneys, the developers, and so uh, we've pretty much paid for the whole thing up until this point out of our pocket. 
Wow. Work as well. So, yeah. A lot of uh, hard work and knowledge, uh, you know, getting a lot of education, talking to like-minded people. And, you know, we don't know it all. And it's just nice to be with other people who we can bounce sure. ideas off of. For sure. Um, okay. So back to the, the coin itself. Uh, would an investor... Uh, be getting regular dividends, or, or what's the dividend schedule? If I, if I were to, you know, work with you and I'm holding some TN coin, uh, when would I expect to start receiving dividend income? I you mentioned something 12 to 18 months earlier, but uh, is that when I will start receiving my first bit of dividends, or am I making most of my money when we sell back the tokens? Or get into that a little bit for me, please. Well, um, what we have in mind is since. When we start this fund, when we get the money to start acquiring the assets, we have to show a certain amount of income. Mm -hmm. You know, once we start acquiring these income producing assets, we at least need to have 12 months to be able to say, okay, this is what the coin is worth. This okay. is the portion of dividends. So we're looking at 12 months and mm -hmm. then uh, we'll start, you know, sending out those dividends hopefully based on quarterly the quarterly after hopefully, that. Yeah, hopefully quarterly after okay. Cool. Is there an existing standard for, for how that's done, or is this just how you're setting it up? It depends on the fund. Some funds do every 12 months, some okay. do every quarter, uh, some do every six. It just depends. Of course, the, you know, it's the taxes also yeah. that have to be sure. sent out and distributed the K1. at the, the K-1. So, right. Um, okay. Makes sense. Um and then when you mentioned dividends, it, are the dividends going to be received in TN coin? So if I were to get, you know, 10% over 12 months, would I receive 10% more TN coins or does the value of the coin itself go up or, or what does that look like? Um, the value of the token goes up. Okay. It's that simple. The, the funds are distributed to the tokens and the token share value goes up just like a... Uh, okay any other stock like an apple or ibm stock sure okay cool um let's see so let's say the value like if if coins hit the market that like you were mentioning the secondary note market that kind of thing what if people start trading their tn coins uh and tn coins start to hit the market that are undervalued or, or what do you have a a system to like buy and burn or, or what are you doing there yeah what we have in mind is when we start seeing um coins on the market for sale, doing a buyback and burning them to stabilize the um, stabilize the coin and the worth of the coin. And to create a floor yeah. so it, it won't fall below. And of right. course, the trading of the co tokens is a whole secondary market. So, right. um, you know, I mean, you have offers and you have people that, you know, are willing to pay so much. So that, that's a, a whole nother market as part of the sure. Yeah, 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 no, well, and that's, you know, Matt and I are, are traders, so I look at this and say, well, you know, if TN coin is super undervalued, I'm going to start buying them now, I'll be that, I'll be that pain in the ass in your, uh, <laughs> in your back pocket, <laughs> giving you something we'll, to do. We'll buy them back and burn them, so, you know. That's, that's fine with me, that's what I want. <laughs> um, so, okay, what, what is your basis then to acquire property? So, like, when, when this is all rolling, like, are, are you going to be looking to to get into things that are like ready to just turn around and rent or do you want to buy stuff that needs like serious rehab so you can flip or what's, what's the business model look like there for acquiring property? Um, the way we have it set right now is I believe it was 30% of it. We were going to do fix and flips, uh, 20% we were going to be doing triple net leases or, um, we have a breakdown. Mm -hmm. uh, how we want to do this. Um, so I don't we, we hope to acquire the properties at 60 to 70 percent value, market value, um, so that we can turn around and sell them or hold notes on them or rent them. Right. Um, sure. So we do have a, uh, a guideline as far as the acquisition um, value of the property. And so hopefully you know, we, can, we can make it within that 60 to 70 percent range on the acquisition. Sure. Interesting. And is that something like you two would be going out and like looking for the properties or do you have like a team set up or, or how do you, how do you see this working? Like five years down the road, is it going to be, you've got 20 employees or do you kind of want to keep it at a level where you can manage it individually? 
Well, our marketing strategy um, has been, uh, we basically go through the tax record. Uh, we have one apartment building that we're looking at that we acquired that way. We sent, you know, letters out. Uh, we also use sources like LoopNet, uh, with uh, these properties. I mean, we're licensed realtors. So we have access to the MLS, uh, access to these databases of commercial properties. And yes, we do look, we're, we're looking up the properties and the acquisitions ourselves. Um, we do have advisors that we consult with. And, um, and so you know, we, we have to stick within those parameters in order for it to be profitable. I mean, Sure. Um, and so, but we also have a network of other realtors, investors who see things on the market that might come up right. that we haven't seen and come up to us and say, "Hey, this is what we have here." So it's it's not just us. We have a network of other people that yeah. we'll be talking to and, and and hopefully find some good deals. Sure. So then. TN coin itself, do you want it to kind of remain you two managing it or do you want there to be like 20 TN coin employees in five years? What do you, what do you picture? Oh, well, of course. I mean, we need uh, a Skilled whole team people. of, of people. Yeah. So, um, as we grow, uh, so will the advisors and yeah. employees. Sure. And, I mean, there's just so many aspects. There's uh, only so much two people can do. Right, and even <laughs> sure. it's not, we're not the only two people. We're delegating a lot of the stuff. I mean, we do have program. Yeah. We're not programming it ourselves. We do have legal right. uh, work and infrastructure, um, and so uh, we're just a project managing the fund or the whole operation. Sure. There's a whole bunch of people behind the scenes. Yeah, so, for sure. So more of a, I guess it's more of an economic question. Like, w what does you know, you've mentioned the bubble a couple of times, like real estate. I think we're looking at a couple of bubbles, actually. I think the stock market's in a major bubble right now, too. And I, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what that does to crypto valuations and house evaluations or, or whatever else. But like, what does a real estate bubble bursting do to TN coin? Is that a big buying opportunity? Or are you kind of hoping to watch your market crash and then you get to snatch stuff up? Or, or what's the, where's your head at? Or do you want to get going and just see everything keep moving up. Like where, I, you know, and I'm, I'm not an economist and I'm not a real estate professional, so I don't know what it is you're actually hoping for. What, what are, what are your thoughts there? Well, all the money is made on a down market. I mean, there you go get up here, at, you know, at the top. So, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, it's all about timing as well. So yeah. well, we want to be in a great position to be able to buy and snatch them up. I mean, that's where the fortunes are made. Um, and I do see that we're, we are at the top of a, a real estate bubble. I think we've been there for the last year. And so, um, it's, uh, you know, it, it's difficult, but it, it's just like all markets, everything's cyclical. Um, yeah. and we've seen it go, it go, comes about every 10 years. It's on a 10 year cycle. And so, uh, that's just inflation. That's just the way the economy works. Yeah. Um, so, and so, so we so want we want to take it as an opportunity when it does yeah. bust, you know, yeah. to create, create, uh, how do you say <laughs> a great opportunity for the investors, you know, sure. what I mean? you know, hopefully for a shift in, in wealth where instead of this time, all the uh, money going back to the banks and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we can funds like ours can buy up and distribute those shares, uh, to everyday people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's, uh, I think it's great. What, what does your gut tell you? We got to be getting close to then a, a burst, right? If we're talking about your 10 year cycle, what do you think? Maybe the next two years. Two, three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't happen instant. So, right. We, you know, the interest rates rise and slowly, uh, as people start begin to default, um, right. you got to eat first. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, um, yeah, we'll see. I, I think it's still another year or two maybe before we hit like the 2010 levels yeah. of foreclosures and all of that. Okay. But are you starting to see that slip now in the market? Is it starting to get there? I, it looks like it to me. Yeah. yeah there's a definitely. slow uptick in foreclosures. We, we're subscribed to the foreclosure registry. So sure. we're there and uh, we've seen a slow uptick in those as well as uh, defaults on other things like cars and credit right. 
clothes. And so yeah. um, I was just reading something a couple days ago that uh, in a lot of the major cities like Chicago, New York, uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. there are a, a huge uptick in foreclosures. Yeah, so well, think, it's overpriced. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's coming. Yeah, for sure. Um, what would be like... Is there anything we've missed? Is there something like like a misconception about TN Coin or something you'd like to clear up, or or what's the if you just like had the floor and the whole world something? What 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 would it be? Well, visit our website, check out our you know what we have to offer. Um, you know, send us a message. Uh, we're you know we're out here trying to create tokens, trying to create business, sure. and. Uh, uh, you know, we appreciate all our investors and all the comments and um, any feedback we can get. I mean, that's that's what it's about. It's like I said, it's about the investors. So we need feedback. Uh, you know, we need uh, to hear, you know, what the uh, community thinks. For sure. How about you, Tanya? Same thing. You know, just if they have questions or comments, we're easily accessible. Just email us. You know, we want to make sure that. If you're thinking about investing in TN coin, that we can answer your questions and make you feel comfortable so that we can move forward. You know, that's, that's what I would say. Oh, amen to that. And, and, you know, good on you for the, the transparency and, and for kind of explaining all this. Like the thing that really stuck out to me is the, the stellar, uh, application of things like it, it tells me you're really serious about um, moving forward and trying to make this happen so first of all i want to thank you both uh for coming I, I appreciate you spending this time with with us here on coincast and uh you know join us join us again everybody if you want to follow up check out tncoin.io or if you want to see more of our interviews you can find us on our youtube channel of course you can always check out cryptotraderspro.com where we'll share everything find us all around the internet social media you know where to look. Just Google Crypto Traders Pro or Google TN Coin. Check out TNCoin.io. Thanks again, Tanya Rodriguez and Luis Del Mazo. Thank uh, you. Thanks, Thanks. We appreciate you having us. Absolutely. Talk to you soon, everybody. Have a great Take weekend. care. Bye.